It's DOS 23 here, and today we have the Tools for Gents and Tim Bernard a Rascal. Uh, this knife comes in four different variations. You can get it in a green canvas micarta that comes in at 269 euros, uh, which I think the euro is very, very uh, close right now to the US dollar. Uh, if I'm wrong, I'll put it up on the screen. You can also get it in two different kinds of fat carbon. Get it in red lava flow or Arctic storm fat carbon, and that's going to cost you 329 euros. And you can get it with titanium scales, and it's still a liner lock at 349 euros. The OEM for this knife is Riot, and let's get some quick specs out of the way. You have a total length of 8 and 5 16 inches long, blade length of 3.5 inches, a grip area from here all the way to the back of 4.5 inches. Handle scale thickness of 0.59, so a little above average, that's excellent. You have a blade stock thickness coming in at 0.157, so pretty chunky blade stock. Behind the edge thickness on this straight edge portion comes in at around 20,000 behind the edge, and in the Tanto portion comes in at around 26,000 behind the edge. You have a very classy looking well-made knife here. Let's take a close look at this. You have, the, like I said, a drop point Tanto. That is uh, pretty good looking. I'm not even a Tanto fan. You have a uh, vertical satin on the primary grind right here and a horizontal satin on the flats. Very nice. Riot always does a good job. Um, you have a decently robust tip for doing piercing tasks and drag cuts. You have a well executed sharpening notch right here. That's going to give you some sharpening life before it starts to widen up in the back of the heel right there. Uh, you do have some mildly aggressive jimping right here. Um, you know, it, it definitely grips onto the thumb. However, if it's too much, I can easily overshoot it. So not really an issue. Uh, came with a flat grind and comes down to a decently thin edge in this portion. Why don't we do some cutting and find out how well it performs. The knife came with a really, really good edge out of box, and being that it has that straight edge from the Tanto, it's going to be a pretty powerful cutter, especially in-hand cuts. It's uh, performing great so far, nice and smooth, and it feels like it has pretty good aggression to it. We'll have to see once we get to the other stuff, but so far so good and uh, comfortable doing this light duty style cutting with those contoured scales. I also love how wide those scales are. Now we're gonna test the ergos on this piece of birch. So I start out light and then you know slowly start increasing the pressure into the wood. Um, once again, those contoured scales were nice and comfortable and they're a little bit thicker than average, uh, which in my opinion is excellent. So everything felt good. No hot spots I could really uh, feel. I could definitely feel the clip, but it wasn't a hot spot per se. Um, it didn't hurt or anything. I could just feel it in the palm. Definitely had a very aggressive edge still, and I uh, could have done this for a pretty pretty good while. I definitely felt like I had a lot of power in that hammer grip, a little bit more control in the saber grip. Now we get started with the half inch twisted scissor rope. This is where you usually feel right away how aggressive the edge is, and to my surprise, it had a very aggressive edge. Um, and even though it was 20, it's 26 thousands behind the edge of that Tanto tip, being that it's still nice and sharp, it was basically push cutting. And since it's a drop point Tanto, it's easy to use that Tanto portion to do cuts like this. I'm basically just pushing it down into the rope and it's making sharp work of it. It's always uh, nice whenever you have a, a toothy edge that's nice and sharp, that makes this, you know, so, it's way less painful, should I say, because I get blisters all the time doing this. Uh, nice in the pinch grip, nice and comfortable. And um, I could have done this for a good while. The edge definitely never felt like it was slacking off or anything. And I only stopped because I ran out of rope. Um, and we have more tests to do after this. So I definitely think it did great. Another advantage of a drop point tanto, it's easy to use that secondary tip. 
for doing drag cuts like that. Um, I, I'm going back and forth with using the Tanto Edge and the secondary tip. Uh, but the, I will say that Tanto Edge is getting a lot of work and it's not a you know very long edge right there. So um, it's surprising how well it stood up. Now this is M390 and like I said, Riot usually does a pretty good job heat treating, especially the last few years. I noticed they maybe started running a little bit harder and uh, it definitely shows. Um, I didn't have any issues with any of the material and uh, I was kind of surprised when I get to this denim in a second how much aggression this edge still had. Um, I'm trying, but I'm, I'm really trying to decide whether I'm going to use that secondary point to get it started or just pull it through and I went with just the pull through method and it worked excellent. Let's check out that edge after all the cutting. Yeah. Now let's close it up and take a look at the action. Now this is a front flipper design. I do wish they would have went with fine cut jimping and either that or make this one of those rounded ones. Uh, however, I can still get it done. Just gotta make sure you grab that top jimp and do it. Um, let's see, can I do the yeah, I can kind of do the reach around, but it's it's not as comfortable. And you can somewhat slow roll it over, but as you can see, whenever you get to about right here, you, you gotta make sure you grab that top lip. Um, very smooth action, of course. It's on bearings, nice and smooth. Riyadh always does a good job with their action. Let's close it up and take a look at these scales. You have some very stunning cross-cut Arctic Storm fat carbon that just looks amazing it's nice in contour it's a very soft contour they knocked off all the edges uh, you have torx t8 for the scale screws big lanyard hole in the back for you lanyard people i definitely would have loved to see a pin back here to keep this nice and clean looking uh, you have a small titanium backspacer for some rigidity over here in the back Stop pin right there. You have a 3D mil titanium pocket clip. That is tip up right hand carry only. And let's check it out in the pocket. There's not a ton of ramp, but I had no problems with it going in and out of my jeans. Uh, but you do have a good bit of the knife sticking out. I would have loved to see this back a little bit more, but at least you have something to grab a hold to. And being that you don't have a flipper tab, um, you won't have anything in the, your hand path when you put it, if you put it at something else in the pocket. The inside, there is no internal milling to uh, save on weight, but I think pretty sure these are titanium liners. Let's check that out. Yeah, titanium liners, titanium backspacer, titanium pocket clip. Um, even, yeah, pretty sure even the hardware is titanium because it's not, it's not grabbing, so... I think that's titanium as well. Now, it is a little weighty because it's a bigger knife. Let's check it out on the scale. First off in grams, 159.3 grams and 5.61 ounces. So yeah, it's not a featherweight for sure. Now, let's take a look at the lockup. It's sitting at around, I'd say 30% or so. Um, when I say bank vault, absolutely no play, any direction whatsoever. Now, the scale, the lock is flush with the show side scale and the show side liner. So you it's, you got to kind of push your finger in there. I would have loved to see uh, a little bit more lock access, but it's not terrible. I can get it done, and um, it's, it doesn't hurt or anything to disengage that lock. Something I talked about in the cutting is uh, the ergos. The ergos were really good because you not only have, you know, that slight contour on the scales, you have wider scales and uh, they fit my hand nicely. No hot spots to really speak of. Like I said, I could feel the clip, but it wasn't, you know, a hot spot per se. And uh, it should be able to fit your large, extra large hands pretty good because I still have a good bit of my medium size hand. So I have a good bit of handle sticking out. Now for some quick size comparisons, we have the Spyderco PM2 and the Spyderco Smock. It's a little bigger than both of these. Next, we have the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Hogue Ritter Full Size RSK. Uh, the Rat 1 is just a hair longer and the, the RSK is just a hair shorter. I have my nitpicks and complaints. I pretty much addressed all of them. 
I uh, would have loved to see finer cut jimping. It would have made the front flipping action just a little bit easier. Um, I would have loved to see a little bit more lock bar access, but like I said, it's not terrible or anything. And I would have loved to, to see them use a hidden lanyard pin so you don't have any extra holes in the knife that you don't need. Um, also, you have pretty good bit of the knife sticking out of the pocket. So if any of those are deal breakers for you, then this might not be the knife for you. However, I must say it's a very well-made knife. It's an attractive looking knife, comfortable in hand, good action. And um, it held up really well in the, the, the factory edge testing that I did. Um, I think that the 269 euros for my quarter version Riot made, I think it's very well priced. Um, and I don't think the fat carbon ones are out of line either. Um, I'm not, I don't think I would go all tie, but that's just me. If you like all tie, then, you know, that's, that's awesome. It's going to make it a little bit heavier. Um, but you know, overall, I think you would be happy with your purchase. And if you're interested in one of these, I will leave a, um, I have affiliate link down below if you want to help support the channel. If not, that's totally fine as well. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. I hope everybody's having an absolute amazing day. I will see y'all rascals on the next one.